Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video on Hypixel Skyblock. And yup, we're doing this again. This is Mage Mistakes That Are Ruining Your Build, Part 4! Okay guys, so before the video starts, I, I like to remind you guys that over 90% of people that watch my videos are actually not subscribed. So it would really help me out if you considered clicking that subscribe button and on with the video with made mistake number one, weapons. Alright, so in my last mage mistakes video, I basically talked about two main mage weapons and that is the Spirit Scepter and the Frozen Scythe. So for this mage guide, these two weapons still remain highly relevant and very powerful. However, a mistake many mages make is not using the most overpowered weapon in the entire game. What is that weapon? Well, that is the Midas Staff. Oh, but Hot Slicer, I thought you're giving late game mage guides. How are we supposed to afford a hundred million coin weapon? Well, what many players do not realize is that although the Midas Staff caps its damage at a hundred million coins, a non-hundred mil Midas Staff is still an incredibly powerful weapon and really should not be neglected. The widest staff that I main is this one right here, and it has 31 million coins paid for it. As you can see, it's significantly cheaper and only costs about 40 million coins maxed. One thing to note is that a non-100 mil Midas Staff is still really, really good, outclassing pretty much any sword in damage, period. How much damage does it do? Well, let's see. Alright, so I got my Wise Dragon Armor, Full Wisdom 3, and my Shadow Goggles. And with holding the Midas Staff, I have 2,095 2, Intelligence, and we strike for 641,000 damage to the Zombies. And, if we go to the Crypt Ghouls for Giant Killer, as you can see to a Crypt Ghoul, we do 680,000 damage. Have you ever seen a sword do 680,000 damage? I doubt it. As you can see, the 30 mil Midas Staff is still incredibly powerful, and I can 2-tap the Revenant Horror 4, while a 100 mil Midas Staff can barely one-shot it. A 30 mil Midas Staff is a very relevant weapon. However, not paying, more, paying less than 100 million coins for your Midas Staff only goes so far. You are not going to be doing this much damage or even close to it, if you only have suppose a 1 mil Midas Staff. For the Midas Staff, in the early amounts of money paid, as in 0 coins to 30 million, 50 million, the scaling is very, very hard. And a 10 mil Midas Staff is going to be a lot, lot worse than a 30 mil Midas Staff. For your Midas Staff, I 100% recommend getting above a 20 mil Midas Staff. Above 20 mil gives you that balance of high damage and low cost. And beyond 30 mil, of course, it's a nice upgrade, but I don't really recommend it as that is just going overkill for just one weapon. Alright, so now I'd like to go over some enchantments for mage items. I have seen so many good Midas staffs on the auction house having sharpness, and that makes me cringe, and that should also make you cringe. Why is sharpness so bad on magic weapons? Well, here's why. If you did not know, enchantments actually significantly impact the damage of a mage item. However, the impact of these enchantments do not work on sharpness. If this spirit scepter had sharpness, it would not do 28% less damage because smite 6 does 48% more damage to undead monsters, it would do 48% less damage because sharpness doesn't affect magic damage. There is no reason why you should even consider buying a mage item like a Spirit Scepter, Frozen Scythe, or Midas Staff if it has sharpness. Do not buy it, it's an absolutely terrible decision, and a similar weapon with Smite 6 will be doing almost 50% more damage, and the only difference is that you have sharpness and they have Smite. Don't make this mistake and get Smite 6 on 
all your weapons because Smite 6 is just so good in dungeons. So that is the enchantments you have to know about for mage items. All right, so now on to the next category, mage armor. All right, so now we're gonna be discussing the armor you want as a late game mage going into floor seven. So I kind of outlined this armor set in my floor six guide for dungeons. However, that guide is sort of outdated and this has much more relevant information. So the main just of the guide still stays. Basically, for floor six, you want two different armor sets. Basically, in the dungeon, you want something like this. The main key points of this are the Shadow Goggles, of course, and the Necromancer Lord Leggings and Necromancer Lord Boots. Now, the chestplate is a point of controversy. The perfect tier 9 chestplate used to be ridiculously overpriced, costing around 30 million coins. However, now the price has dropped down to a very reasonable 9 to 10 million coins. When I made my Mage Mistakes Part 3 guide and when I made my dungeon guide for Floor 6, getting a Tier 9 Perfect Chestplate was completely not worth it as it costed over 30 million coins to buy for a slight increase in EHP. However, now, paying this much money for this chestplate actually makes a lot of sense. If you compare this to a common alternative, the Legendary Zombie Soldier, you're going to be getting 10 to 15,000 more EHP by using this over the zombie soldier. The reason for this is EHP balancing. If you did not know, EHP, like your strength and critical damage, needs to be balanced. You need to have a fair balance of health and defense. You should have about a margin of 4 to 3 of health and defense. A little bit more health than defense but you do want to have a significant amount of defense to back it. That is why many endgame dungeon players have the two forts, Necromancer Lord, as you can see here, the leggings and the chest plate, but they actually use tier 12 perfect boots. This is all for the reason of EHP balancing. If you do not have a good balance of EHP, you're going to be losing thousands of potential EHP points because you don't have the proper balance of health and defense. This is a really nicely balanced setup right here, where the Necromancer Lord gives significantly more health than defense, but it's completely made up by the perfect chest plate. I really recommend you get this setup. It only costs about 25 million, 30 million coins, depending on the enchants you want on it, and it is 100% worth it. So this setup is tanky enough to get you to the main dungeon. At the very start of a dungeon run, I have about 90,000 EHP, which is pretty good. However, when this, when this Terracotta roll around and during the Satan boss fight, you want to put on this Necromancer Lord helmet. So one of the key points that people missed in my Floor 6 guide is that you want this Necromancer Lord helmet on Giant. Giant, as you can see, gives a ridiculous amount of health, 1300 and a lot of defense as well. This helmet is going to make your EHP go up by almost 100,000 points. It's absolutely broken, and if you're wondering, a Bonzo Mask, as you can see I have a Bonzo Mask right here, a Bonzo Mask is also a good alternative, however, the only problem with the Bonzo Mask is that it doesn't have very good EHP balancing, you're just wearing it for the extra life, so wearing the Necromancer Lord Helmet's actually going to give you way more natural health regen, and might actually be a better option than the Bonzo Mask, because it gives more intelligence as well. Alright, so now that I've gone over the weapons that you need and the armor that you need, I'm going to hop into a dungeon run and talk about some dungeon strategies for floor 6 and how you can take practically zero damage from certain mobs in the floor. Some of these tips are quite advanced but really useful, so pay close attention and let's dive right into it. Okay guys, so we finally got into a dungeon run and... As you can see, here's my stats, uh, 3,200 health and about 2,500 defense. And as you can see, my EHP is at 93,000. So I really do have a lot of EHP at the start of a dungeon. 90,000 is pretty good, not insane, but pretty good. 
So, let's get into this dungeon and let's see how good the Midas stat really is. So, as you can see, it's striking for over a million damage. Look at that. This is the start of a dungeon with no blessings or anything. And look how much damage it's doing. Let's just do a zombie soldier. Look at that. One million damage just off the start of a dungeon. People say that a 30 mil Midas staff is not good, but that is simply not true. A 30 mil Midas is an insanely powerful weapon, regardless of being 100 mil or not. And if you can afford a Midas staff, even if it's not 100 mil, get a Midas staff. It is totally worth it, and you should really consider getting one. As you can see, I'm alternating between the Spirit Scepter and the Midas Staff. One thing to mention is that the Spirit Scepter is... Uh, the Midas Staff is not really a Spirit Scepter replacement. While you can use the Midas Staff, it is a complete replacement to the Spirit Scepter. I would strongly uh, not, not recommend that. Because the AoE of the Spirit Scepter is unparalleled. And it's really good. If you use them both together, that's going to be the perfect maid setup, which is going to be really, really powerful. But if you don't use them together and you only use the Midas Staff, as you can see, the Midas Staff is a pretty awkward attack. As you can see, it would be like you need some space in front of you for it to actually work. So I really recommend uh, keeping your Spirit Scepter around. Or at least something like a Frozen Scythe, just so that in case you don't have enough space to attack enemies with the Midas Staff, you're not completely screwed, you know? So that's what I have to say about that. Now let's talk about secrets. So as you know, secrets are one of the main ways that you can get an S plus rank in dungeons. And they're very important. To get an S+, plus, you need every single secret in the game. So, you got to know every single secret in Dungeons. For this, I recommend the Dungeon Secret Guides Discord. They have pretty clearly marked every single secret in Dungeons. And it is just really useful to have that Discord, because in case you forget a specific secret, you can always just quickly hop onto the Discord, just like this, F11. Here I have the Dungeon Secret Guide, and you can look at the secret that you need. So I've posted the Dungeon Seeker Guide Discord in the description, and I am not sponsored by Dungeon Seeker Guide, uh, but it really is a good thing. Also, these Golden Crypts, I recommend you blow them up because you just get a free Revive Stone, meaning you don't have to kill a fairy. So that's just a good thing to have. You don't have to go all the way there. It might save some time. So, yeah. Alright guys, so now we're going to put on the Necromancer Lord Helmet, and let's see our EHP real quick. As you can see, we have over 330,000 EHP. As you can see, that is a lot of EHP, and with the Giant Reforge, this uh, per a perfect Tier 9 chestplate really does help. So as you can see, this guy, Ivy Gyre, does have the Werewolf Armor, so that's going to help out a lot. So let's do this. Alright, so we're going to go here, and we're just going to get the golems real quickly, so we can get the ancient roses and deal with them, they're going to be real nice in the boss fight. And then for the golems, I recommend using the spirit scepter, because as you can see, the Midas staff can only get like one or two of them at a time, so I just recommend spirit scepter so you can actually help out. For the golems, the berserkers are going to be way more useful, because they just do a lot more DPS, while mages are more like AoE damage and clearing. As you can see, we're doing pretty good. As you can see, we just got an Ancient Rose there. Very pog. As you can see, just an easy 800k. And as you can see, we're going to go back to the portal right now. And this guy with the Werewolf Armor is going to heal us for a large, large, large amount of health. As you can see, Werewolf Armor, mage, uh, werewolf armor healers are not to be neglected. They're actually really good. And as you can see, we're basically, we're not losing anything. We're, we're not losing any health. We're just taking it. I mean, this is just a joke at this point. As you can see, we lost some more over there. But we instantly get it back because of lifesteal. So, in my Floor 6 guide, I talked about how you needed a, a secondary lifesteal weapon, like a necromancer sword. However, if you're feeling confident enough that you don't actually need the lifesteal, 
then that second weapon, like the Necromancer Sword, becomes highly useless because you're only using it for one minute, and what's the point of spending 7 million coins on a sword if you don't even need it and you're just going to use it for one minute? So if you're feeling confident that you don't need the extra life steal and the Spirit Step will give you enough life steal, then sell your Necromancer Sword or whatever, ma whatever weapon you have. Unless you're gonna go for a mage beam route with the ter with the giants in the Satan boss fight, there really is no reason to have a specific weapon just to life steal. If in the end you're just going to just end up doing this, right? So that's what I have to say on that. Uh, if you're feeling confident that you can take the Karakata without additional life steal, then there is absolutely no reason to go with a livid dagger or a necromancer lord sword. Alright, so now I'm going to be going over something important, and that is what I call invulnerability frames, but really, it's it's not called that officially, but basically, one of the worst giants of the Satan boss fight is Bigfoot, because he does the most damage. But I'm going to be teaching you how you can take zero damage from Bigfoot, literally. You don't take any damage from Bigfoot with this strategy. So just watch this. So as you know, Bigfoot has a range of damage that he does. And if you can get in the specific area where he doesn't do a lot of damage, as you can see, you only take knockback, but you don't take all that much damage. This is what I call invulnerability frame, but that's not the official term, but I just call it that. And it's a way that you can take zero damage from Bigfoot stomps and from Satan stomps as well. It's actually a really useful tip, as you can see there he stomped, and I literally took zero damage. How do you do that? Well, you go to a very specific place, um, I'd say it's around like four or five blocks, maybe even six, away from the giant. You kind of just got to get a feel for it. And when you're in that specific range, it just delivers knockback, but it actually doesn't deliver any damage. It's a strange glitch, but it's really, really useful, and I recommend you try it. It's especially good for berserkers who are trying to solo floor six, because often what stops you from soloing floor six is Bigfoot himself and that big stomp. So it might be useful to mages and berserkers alike, because that's how you can take zero damage from the stomp. So it's actually really, really useful, and not that many people even know you can do this. So here's Satan. As you can see, we're just we're just avoiding all the stomps here really quickly and taking basically no damage. We could take off this Necromancer Lord Helmet just fine, but I have it on just in case for these big boulder hits. So as you can see, now I'm out of mana, so I'm going to switch the Frozen, the Spirit Scepter for the Frozen Scythe. So this way, as you can see, now we can just infinitely run the mana without losing anything. And as you can see, there's another stomp I got in the specific range, and I only took about 30, 10%, 30%, something like that, of the damage that the stomp should do. Really useful tip, and I recommend you do it. And as you can see, there we go, S+, plus, a perfect score on floor 6, not a single death. As you can see, look at that. This works. This strategy really does work pretty well in my opinion. This gear is really good in my opinion. Um, and I hope this guide helped you. Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this Mage Mistakes Part 4 guide. So this has very common tips and some lesser known tips like the invulnerability frames glitch. And I really hope that this guide helped you. Again, I'd like to say that under 10% of my regular viewers are subscribed. So it really helped me if you subscribed. I'm trying to reach 1,500 by the end of the year. Please comment down below any suggestions. I love getting feedback from you guys, and I got a lot in the last video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!